Here we are. (laughs) Welcome to something we've never done before, and certainly, hopefully, have never done anything this badly before. Um, You can tell that we are incredibly technologically I. Um, We have met more that are much more technologically literate than than I am. But what I wanted to do today, and I I pulled um, eight of us together right now. Um, It is going to be very unique. It's going to be hopefully uh, pretty quick moving. And there's a reason for it. We we did, you know, when uh, when the initial days of COVID began, we actually never canceled our Tuesday night, but people never came or a lot of people didn't come because of COVID. And um, and so what we did during that period of time was that's when we initiated uh, the Zoom broadcast. And we actually had for a period of time, we had some people who would show up here and we do Zoom and we actually sat here in the prayer room. And um, that's kind of what we did. And um, there were a lot of family from all over the states who became very much a part of it. Right. And we continued on. We kept doing it. And um, uh Honestly, for me, it reached a point where I wasn't sure it was really accomplishing all that I wanted it to accomplish. My heart for everybody is family, um, not just a show. And sometimes when, when, when we would gather, it would be a few here, a few there. But I don't know that relationships were completely building in the ways that we want to see them happen. And we want to see that happen. But then it also just became that everybody was doing Zoom and it just got, we got Zoomed out. And then we, um, but, but not only that, we had four guys in particular that were, that were doing it on a rotation basis. And I am so grateful for all of them, uh, for Alan, for Greg, for Chris and for Brian, because those guys really just labored. They just kept going. Um, But they, like I noticed that, well, it's kind of dwindling and um, the um, experience is not the same. Um, and we want it to be something that is full of life and joy um, and full of the presence of God. And if there's one thing I know is that we have to be able to carry something if we're going to deliver something. And sometimes just doing a meeting doesn't mean that you're carrying anything. Sometimes it just means we're, we're doing a meeting. And uh, that's the last thing that we ever want to become known for is doing meetings. And, um, and so um, I kind of watched it for a while. I let it go for a while. Actually, Alan, I think, talked to me first about it probably two or three months ago and said, hey, maybe we should be doing something a little different. Uh, you know, maybe we can get together and discuss this. So um, you're in the midst of the discussion right now, everybody. Isn't this exciting? And uh, <laughs> that it was nothing we did behind closed doors uh, because, frankly, Several of us have been very busy. I have actually been really the past the past couple of months. I've been flat out busy, very busy, and um, and it's just been one of those things. I, I still have people that I, I've got to call back that I said I I talked to them uh, about some deep things that are going on inside their life, and I'm like I haven't even called them yet. You know, I've said, yeah, we're going to get to it. And um, I hate it that I haven't been able to get to some of those things at this point in time. So, um, but I'm, we're doing it and things seem to be happening um, in an increasing way. Um, As far as relationships, I know that um, I've been uh, personally and and our, our team has been traveling quite a bit recently. We've done a lot of New England things. We, uh, a number of us, I think it was eight, maybe even 10 of us ended up in um, um, Carlisle, Pennsylvania uh, a couple of weeks ago. And it was an amazing time. Just really had a really good time. Um, and uh, I was down South uh, this past weekend. Um, and so th- there are some things that are stirring there. Uh, there've been a number of requests from out West for those of you who might be from out West. Um, um, uh, there's a number of requests and my hope is that I can do that kind of in one kind of a trip. Uh, I'm, I'm rather than trying to go back and forth and back and forth, we're just going to start doing things differently. Um, and um, because we have to continue to develop relationship but we also have to keep um, places where ministry is still happening. My heart for every single one of you, 
Um, and that's hopefully what will occur as a result of our gatherings together is that you begin doing what maybe you've never done, uh, that you begin reaching into people's lives. There are a, there are a whole lot of very hungry people out, of that, out there. I have become very um, engaged in speaking truth wherever I've been. Uh, I'm very aware that in our own family, uh, Mo family, we have people that um, have experienced different experiences. I'm very aware of that, but yet I feel very responsible to, to share uh, what I will stand before the Lord for one day. Um, and I care about every single one of you. So I, I worked really hard. I think I've generated at least 60, if not more, um, um, religious exemptions, had to do some more today, um, where people are literally in the middle of, of, of some very difficult days. Um, we've had people who've lost their jobs. We have people that, um, that the exemption worked. Um, uh, so we've had both things happen. Um, and I want to encourage you to hold on. I believe things are flipping. It was kind of cool to, to read about what happened. This is just kind of introductory stuff, but what just happened in, um, I think it was New York. Um, it was either New York or Philadelphia, but the whole uh, fire department basically said, we will not enforce a mandate um, in, in, our, um, in our area. That was huge. That was like uh, not, not just 50 or 100, that was thousands uh, of people that were impacted through that. Uh, I believe things are completely flipping. I believe we are in the midst of that right now. Um, I'm not the only one who believes that, but I believe that there's some things that are are shifting, and I want to encourage you, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, press, press the manipulation to the max. Absolutely. Say, so you will discriminate against me. Is that what you're saying? I want to encourage you not to back down. Now, I've heard from others, and I, I was told, uh, actually yesterday had somebody, uh, was it yesterday, two days ago, on Sunday, had somebody um, privately asked me, they said, I was informed by another pastor, well, you know, we don't want to go to school board meetings, and we don't want to uh, speak these things, you know, we want to just be loving, that we're the loving ones. Well, let me tell you something, if truth is not engaged in this hour, you're not loving, you yeah. actually have to engage truth in this hour in order to be loving. Uh, it is not loving to, to leave people in error. And I am not willing to let our kids um, go through what I think um, the agenda of those who are walking in a very, very dangerous place, very Luciferian, very evil in this period of time. I'm not willing to let them just go to hell in a handbasket. Uh, I will fight for my children. I will fight for the next generation. That's why I live. I live here, yes, for the gospel, but I live here because I believe God wants to release something powerful in the earth in this day, and that if we chicken out, we will become exactly like, like those in Germany and Holland and other places who completely backed away from the difficulty that that others would step up to, and some of them would lose their lives. Um, Bonhoeffer was one of them, but nevertheless, he um, he was willing to speak. There, there's another. Uh, uh, I think her name was Teresa Neumann. I was sharing the story. I can't remember where I was exactly, but she was actually a Catholic um, nun, um, very godly, knew the Lord. But Teresa Neumann literally lived. I believe it was 38 years. You ready for this? She never ate for 38 years. She was on a hundred percent fast. She, it was totally supernatural. And um, there's several throughout church history where that happened. I began sharing some things about the mystics on uh, Friday night with our team here. And I'll be sharing more and more about some of the things that God will release in this hour, I believe, that carry, carry a part of the supernatural that most people are afraid of. First, first person I ever heard this stuff from was John Wimber um, in the first um, cassette tapes that I listened way back in 1982. And he shared some of these stories and, and some other stories. But, but, the, but I, I'm very aware of the fact, and Teresa, actually, they said that um, the Nazis came looking for her and she became invisible to them. 
Uh, there are things that God's going to do in this hour that are going to be very, very supernatural. But if we cower, we won't be the ones experiencing it. We must be those who, who press ahead with what he carries with truth. <sighs> so what I wanted to touch base with, I, I'm just going to keep looking at Greg's smile there on the blank <laughs> one, uh, because at least he's smiling. Nobody else is, but um, I guess Wayne is too on his picture, but. Um, <laughs> thank you, Alan. I like that smile. Could you do that again, please? <laughs> um, but I want to, first of all, just let me kind of make sure everybody knows who everybody is. So I don't know what order you're looking at them, but um, we have Ivy, uh, we have Chris, just kind of nod so they know who you are. But um, And then uh, Greg is, is next to Chris on my screen. Uh -huh. Smiling, <laughs> smiling, but, but not as good as a smile as where, when he's with his wife, but whatever. But um, and then Denise, who is some of you may not know Denise. Um, Denise has been with um, us on several mission trips. I, I you've been Africa, Europe and where else? There's somebody else somewhere else. Colombia. What and Colombia? Yeah, I mean, it's like I was thinking about it. It's like, man, she's she's been on on uh, three continents, four continents because she's here. But um, with us anyways, and then there's Alan um, and Brian Mugabe's, whose name is wrong. Um, <laughs> we're going to rename you right now, Brian. Um, is that okay? You don't mind? Um, because you don't need to carry my name. You carry the name of Jesus, Brian Mugabe. <laughs> and then Wayne Armstrong, who evidently we can't get his video to work. Are you there, Wayne? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, good. But you but no video? Well, it wouldn't come on. Um, give it, give it um, a shot now. All right, give me a sec. We'd like to be able to see you if we can. And um, there you go. I'm there back. he is. Um, so basically, I, I was just praying and I said, Lord, what do you want to do? Where do we want to go? And um, uh, the big subject tonight is what's next. And, um, and one of the things I found, you know, years ago when Mo began, one of the first things I did was I did these prophetic roundtables everywhere. Um, and in fact, it was uh, pretty funny because some of the big boys were like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm doing prophetic roundtables. Like, well, we weren't invited. None of us big guys were invited. I said, I know, because I actually believe that God will speak uh, even to the little guy. And I'll bet, I'll bet you that we hear the same things that the big guys are hearing. And, um, and so, and we did. And it was amazing some of the accuracy and um, uh, release that happened there. And I believe, and I believe it's one of the calls that God has on Mo is that we are here to release people. We're not here to control people. We're not here to contain people. Uh, we're not here to be the who's who we, we actually want to see uh, people grow into the purposes of God um, that they have and fulfill it. And I believe God is speaking probably to uh, the vast majority of you uh, who are even watching this. You're sharing different things. And later on, uh, we're going to let you share those things. We're not going to let you preach and we're not going to let you control it. But we're going to. Um, but my encouragement is that as we begin going through this and sharing some of the things um, that the Lord's going to give you very specific things um, about what to do. If, if maybe Chris, if you could uh, find the, um, uh, the text that I sent to you guys about the, the different subjects we were going to cover, uh, if you could find that text or one of you um, and just kind of um, recount those things. I think it's in, it's in the description, but I the phone, it. it's it. My phone is being utilized right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, as my camera, so I can't even get on my phone. Wait, and um, I, I have weird. it right here. You have it. So what were the, I think there were four questions or four things that I, I responded. These are the things that we're going to address initially right now. So go ahead. Making decisions in a manipulative and coercive world. Stop. So basically um, to me, this is the world we're living in a very real real way right now. Many of us, not all of us, but many of us are living in a place where things are being manipulated. Uh, bluntly, we have um, 
we have we have people that where their children have said, you're not allowed around my children, um, your grandchildren, because you won't get a vaccine. That's a serious issue. Other things that are happening, and it's happening everywhere, where, uh, where they're basically being told, if you are unvaccinated, somebody came out, who shared, was this you, Chris, today, who told me that somebody basically said, if you're not vaccinated, we don't care if you die. Um, yes. You know, you're just, you, it's your fault that we're, we're getting <laughs> this thing. And so there's this incredibly manipulative, very strong um strong armed sense of trying to control people. Before I go any further, let me say this, and we'll respond to that in just a minute. But I love every single one of you, whether you got a vaccine or didn't. I will pray for every single one of you, whether you got a vaccine or didn't. Um, I, I was in, um, I was down south, I won't say exactly where, but I was down south and I spoke in a church and there were a lot of people who stood up to basically repent and ask God to forgive them for taking the vaccine because they actually had something in their conscience that said, don't. And we prayed for them and prayed that God will heal them. I will do that all the time because I believe that there are people. And there was one person in particular absolute struck terror um, just all over her face. She'd been carrying that fear for a long time. So. We know that. I don't care. I'm going to pray for people. You're our family. We love you. There's, I'm, there's nothing that I'm putting on anybody, but I do want you to know that we have people who have experienced both, both elements of that. But there's also a coercion, and that's one of the things I want to talk about with, with some of you. I know that um, uh, I was at Greg's house a few weeks ago, and we were talking about some of the stuff, you know, just in his business. And some of you um, in regards to your work and those kinds of things are being placed in the horrible position of what do I do if I'm going to lose my job if I don't do this? And I want to talk about that. It's, this is a family talk in a very real way. And I want, it, I want you to feel like uh, you're going to be able to be a part of this conversation as we go on. What's the next question? Actually, what's next was the first one. I, what's I, next? I, well, I said that one. I knew yeah. that one. Okay. Uh, releasing gifts in evangelism in the world we live in today. Okay. Uh, one of the things that is huge, I don't know if you feel it, but I know a lot of people do, is that the overwhelming, because of the negative, it's amazing how many have, quote unquote, fallen away. They've, or they're, they, they don't want to have things to do with Christianity because they see, uh, they see a lot of Christians as this is how they are. And so as a result, there's a tension. How do we minister to people in this environment right now? Um, and it's very important that, we, that we're releasing it. We need to understand that we are living in, we are in the harvest. And some people will experience harvest, some will not. And, and the reason they won't is usually fear-based as well as uh, a number of other things, but in this culture, we have to, we have to address that. Keep going. And uh, boldness in the face of adversity. Right. And um, that's pretty self-explanatory. So we're going to talk about that. I'd like to just ask um, for particularly those in our panel, whatever, um, to engage any part of that, that, that you're, you're sensing. I really have something that I want to share with this of what the Holy Spirit's been speaking to me, not opinion. What, what's the Lord saying? What are you sensing? What's going on? Yep. Alan. Um, let's see. I wrote, I wrote down here. Um, I feel like it's a time not to be distracted. I feel what like it's be a what? Time. Can, you, can you hear me? Uh, well, yeah. can everybody else hear him? Okay. Yes. That's my volume. Okay. Go ahead. All right. So I, I feel like uh, my job description, regardless of, of, of all this stuff that you're mentioning that's going on, has not changed. And I believe that, that it's a time to focus on him, and it's a time to focus on mission. It's not a time to be distracted. And uh, that's one of the biggest challenges that I, I faced is there's, there are things pulling at me from uh, internally, externally, stuff the enemy's doing, whatever. And just uh, that that focusing on him. And I do believe things will break evangelistically. Um, I remember I had this 
this dream. And in the dream, I became Lonnie Frisbee. I'm not saying I'm the next Lonnie Frisbee or anything like that. This is a type. Okay. Yeah. And so um, I, in the dream, I became Lonnie Frisbee. And I remember it was, it was a little difficult. You know, and we, I, I was going out on the street, witnessing and just sharing with whoever came along like Lonnie did. And then um, I remember even go, going up to a group of Satanists. So there was boldness involved. But I remember what the thing that the Lord spoke to me is if you are consistent, it will break. Come on. And I, and I believe that if, if we as a group of people are not distracted, we focus on the things that are important. Some, some uh, like John used to say, the main and the plain. Okay, worshiping, knowing my Bible, praying, reaching out, Holy Spirit stuff, just the basics. I really feel like things will break. And I think just if we if we are consistent in doing good, we'll reap. That's good. Um, let's go further with that a little bit further than that, Alan. So, so and and I'm gonna bring up, you know, God, God builds our history. Um to help us in the coming days. And I know that Alan was a part of a, a school system actually um, in Sacramento. And not everything that you experienced out there was easy, but you broke through in a very powerful way um, with, why don't you just share just a little piece of that? Because I, I think that many times we we just think, oh, well, that was a part of the past. And yet it was part, I, I've been telling everybody, I said, listen, up till now, everything you've been going through has been practice. Yeah. Everything. Uh, you know, uh, you, you think this has been the real deal. This is not. Now we're hitting the real deal. This is the real deal. And um, this is where I believe that most of us have been prepared for, for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. So go ahead, Alan, just um, kind of share a little yeah. bit what happened there. Well, I, I, I really worked relationally within the, within the system. Um, and I would share not preach, not preachy stuff, but I would share experience. And so I, I had a lot of favor with, with the staff. Um, there are some different things, words of knowledge the Lord gave me with the principal, um, just that I, uh, certain things I would say that were him that really gave me favor with him. And so I was able to do a, a Christian club. And so, um, uh, you know, I had kids that were healed, saved, and delivered in my classroom. Um, um, I, uh, there were kids that were, uh, God healed people. You know, I remember... One time the speaker didn't show up. So I said, I guess I'm on. So um, I pulled out my phone and I showed uh, uh, a picture of uh, my daughter Bethany's back before uh, she was on her back for uh, flat on her back for six months. Couldn't couldn't barely walk. And uh, God healed her. And I had x-rays before and after. So I showed that around and and I said, OK, is anybody got anything they want to pray, pray for? And um, uh, this one woman, a uh, young woman. Um, had they had dropped her during the drama class and her she uh, had ice on her wrist and on her ankle so we prayed for her uh, wrist instantly healed tingling instantly healed prayed for her ankle tingling instantly healed and I remember that I, I said anybody that has faith come over and pray with me and I remember um, uh, one kid who uh, he, he went to a Masonic church because, you know, at a school, and he, this is like, you open up the door and you get people who think they're Christians and everything else. <laughs> so he goes, I, I've, I've never seen a miracle before ever. It's cool. like totally blown away. We, uh, in between classes, I had a girl delivered. Um, the, one of the security guards brought her to us. Uh, we led her to the Lord one year, the next year um, she came in, in between classes, kids are filing out, kids are filing in. And, um, uh, she goes, I, the, 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 the demon, she'd been playing with Ouija boards. The demons are harassing me. I can, I can hear their voices and I can see something up there in the corner. And so we started praying for her and she's going, I'm getting really angry. I want to hit you, Mr. Garrett. <laughs> so, um, so my paraeducator who was Russian Orthodox, uh, she goes, Oh, Oh, Mr. Garrett. And she runs over and gets some, uh, holy water. She had some holy water in her closet. <laughs> we had the girl drink it. And so I just, yeah, I prayed for the thing, told it to go. In the name of Jesus, oh, it left. In between it classes, was. it just left, you know? Amen. And um, so uh, but the, uh, the Lord can do that stuff in, in environments. You just have to follow his lead. And, and wow. uh, you know, you can't, you can't offend people, but you, you can do stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Amen. That's good. Amen. So, yeah. Danny. Yeah. Um, Wayne. Wayne. Uh, 
it goes along with what he's been talking to me about all today. Um, it, and it's Jeremiah. It, it's from Jeremiah one eleven. You know, I've been seeing 11 all over the place. And yep. Jeremiah one eleven is where God asks Jeremiah, what do you see? Hmm. And Jeremiah responds. And then he, he says uh, in verse 12, you see correctly, for I watch over my word to accomplish it. And then he asked Jeremiah again, what do you see? And I feel like the, the Lord has been speaking very particularly about um, what you'd mentioned a little earlier, Alan, of having eyes for him um you know i've got a bunch of verses here that uh i want to touch on really quickly because it, it relates to what you were sharing alan um that he's inviting I, I feel like there's in mark 10 there's two stories in mark 10 it's the rich young ruler who comes to to jesus and he asks him you know what you know help me and jesus says you know Leave everything, follow me. I'm just paraphrasing to be quick. Um, and that young man struggled with it. Yet later on in the chapter, Jesus encounters the, uh, the, the blind beggar. And the blind beggar recognized who Jesus was and, and cried out to him. But it's interesting that he cried out to him as the son of David. He recognized his authority, even though he is blind. And, and what was striking me about that, I kept hearing the phrase, it takes a blind man to see Jesus. And the Lord started speaking to me at that point about, I'm not looking for conventional wisdom. I'm looking for men who are looking for me. I'm yeah. looking for those who are, who are pursuing me. Yes. And I know we've heard a lot about, about this, but then uh, Colossians 3.10 was, was the next um, verse that came out, and it was um, God, specifically looking at revelation knowledge, true knowledge that's actually received by the Spirit, that that the Lord wants to commune with us and, and wants to lead us, not by our own understanding, but building his kingdom by simply following him. And that, that's been a message of Mo for, for years, um, you know, and I... <sighs> I look at I look at Jeremiah and I look at Daniel, and what they saw, um, you know, even Jesus when when he was in uh, uh, growing up, he he grew up in a corrupt leadership. He grew up in a corrupt society that was brutal. Yet he maintained honor and could see the Father's calling on men's hearts. Yeah, and not get offended by their actions right and been, that's been a big struggle for me with what i see with going on with some of the leaders in our country and i'm having to deal with not letting my heart get hardened because of some of their actions and some of their words that is purely deception is purely evil you know they've aligned their purposes with the with the enemy but i still have to look at them and pray for their redemption and have the father's heart towards it. And then it was interesting that he then he then took me to the the, the parable of the lost son. Um, you know, the son who who left and spent his inheritance and then came back. And it, it was a comment I heard that just stuck with me and kept pounding on me. And that's just kind of how Holy Spirit works sometimes. And it was a lot of the times we see ourselves as one of the two sons. But I believe right now the father is inviting us into his father's heart to be like the father, to reach out to the lost son, to be looking out for the lost son, to prepare for the lost son, to get the ring ready, to get the robe ready. Even though he's loving his, his son who's there, he, he, he has a heart for the lost son. That's and the that mercy of God. If, that if we would... If we would partner with him and 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 receive his heart for 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 these lost children, I believe we're gonna what you've been talking about the great harvest. I, I believe that's the next move that that we're seeing that that transformation that that 
occurs within us as we commune with him, as we, that, that word yada, as we, that intimate communion with the father, what we behold, we become, and we become the father to the lost generation. Okay, nice. And I, I say father, but I, I, it's not gender specific. Uh, it's that father heart that wants to see the son's return. Yeah, that's good. Greg, you had something? Uh, whenever, whenever you want. No, I'm just, I, I thought you'd raised your hand a little earlier. No, no, just excited. Incidentally, I, I see a number of people that have raised hands. Uh, let me just encourage you. We're going to go through that later on. Um, but right now we're just dealing uh, with folks from the, um, from this, this group that we're, we're with, because I feel like otherwise it'll just go way long and it could go anywhere. And uh, we know that. So um, Denise, go ahead. Can you hear me? Okay. We can hear you. <laughs> okay. Um, I was, praying about this after reading your question and I felt like the Lord brought me back to when it all first started happening and there was that period of time where you thought this is just going to blow over you thought this was just going to be done with it's not that big a deal and then it didn't it felt like everything was upside down and nobody knew where where anything was going or what was happening and during that time I was beginning to intercede for people to wake up, for the church to wake up. You know, we were all talking about that. We were all kind of <clears throat> talking about waking up. And I heard the Lord say to me that you can't wake up the multitudes until you're awake. And there was a little sting with that. But as I thought about it, it made a lot of sense to me that those that are sleeping don't know that they're sleeping. Right. You know, um, you don't automatically just think, oh, yeah, I'm asleep. You know, you're just not going to think that. So I, I went to the Lord and, OK, God, you know, I gave you permission to wake me up, you know, in those areas that I am sleeping. Show me. I want to be aware, you know, and and I, I began to see new definitions in my at least in my life of surrender you know, how I've been thinking I've been surrendering for many years, but it's all new. It's a totally different. And I saw this picture of, <clears throat> I was in a, like an old mining cart. You know, if you picture some of those crazy old movies when you're, you know, you're on a mining cart, there's a break to slow down. But um, you, you go over hills, you can see a little bit of the tracks and you can go over the hills and go around corners and things like that. Well, um, what seemed to happen in this vision or whatever it was after I had told him, you know, I gave you permission to wake me up, you know, well, the tracks disappeared. And it was like the movies where the tracks are gone and you don't know what's around the corner. You don't know which direction it's going because you can't see any tracks ahead. And I felt like in my spirit, the Lord says, you're going from rails to sails. So it's no longer the rails, but now there's a sail. And I got to wait for the wind of the spirit to move me. And it's going to be different. And, and since that period of time, we've had so many changes in our lives, just physical move across the you know, states and, and just really disconnected. It felt really disconnected. But yeah. as I prayed into that, too, and I just feel like this is significant for the, for the body. I feel like what's happening to me in the natural a lot of times is something that God's trying to speak to as I intercede for the body. And <clears throat> we, um, I feel like the Lord's saying, you're not, you're not disconnected. You're learning to be led in a different way. It, it, you know, there's no longer rails or sails and you're going to have to adjust. You know, you might feel disconnected. And I have felt so disconnected from everything um, with everything that's been happening, our jobs, our move, our everything, you know, it's just been a complete turnaround, but 
is it's kind of what I've been hearing, you know, rails to sales. And I'm still kind of digging into what that means. But it's interesting, Wayne mentioned prodigals, and I felt like that's significant too. That's something that I've thought about over the last just few years. We've had we had two prodigals that came back, and now ours have come back. Um, and it was amazing and neat, and we were excited and we were accepting. But then it became messy. Um, and that's okay. That's okay. But it wasn't. I feel like that's what's true in the church, too. There's a lot of people looking for hope. There's a lot of people looking for answers coming back. Um, a lot of prodigals returning. But it's messy. They don't it's just fit messy. in. You know, you, you, you've got to get to the root of the things that caused them to leave in the first place. Whether that, you know. And during that, I also had a vision that spoke to me about some of, the, some of that. I, at least I feel like it was connected. Um, I was looking out and I saw a, a battlefield and I don't like violence. I don't even like to watch violent movies. I don't like any of that, but this was horrid. This was horrid. This is what you're picturing on ISIS. It's what you're picturing on, you know, in Afghanistan and the martyrs and, you know, people's heads were partially severed and, arms and children and you know and I won't go into any more detail but it, you need to know that it was heart-wrenching to look out and see these people doing this somebody would come up behind somebody tap them on the shoulder and that person would turn around and just slit their throat you know and and it was just happening all around me everywhere I looked it was just a bloody horde battlefield and I didn't even know what to, to do with that, but the sun started to come up and light started to be shed. And, it, and as the light started to shine on these people that were, were fighting with each other, they began to open their eyes and go, oh my God, you're my friend. You know, you're not the enemy. I thought you were the enemy. And, and all around this battlefield, people began to weep and repent and, and, um, it was like nothing I'd ever, ever seen as, you know, almost gnashing of teeth, you know, just, just horrid, horrid things that they realized what they had done to the people around them that were supposed to be family and supposed to be friends. And I realized it's the church. Yeah. You no, know, it's the church that, yeah. and, and as the sun came up and people began to repent, there came healing you know, as they, as they begin to have their eyes opened up and there was a true awakening, you know, to seeing what's really going on around them and who the people are, that those are my friends and my family. They're not the enemy. Right. Um, so I, I feel like that that's kind of ties in with the whole prodigal thing. Um, yeah. And what's to me is I see going on. It's good. Ivy. Um, so I was thinking I would share some of what the Lord has been showing me because it really does line up with uh, not only your questions, which I never actually read until just now. <laughs> I don't know how I missed that, but <laughs> um, in, re in regards to like what's next um, recently, and Danny, you've heard all of these visions that the Lord has showed me, but not everyone else on has. Um, when we were at your house during worship, the, what I had seen was all about destiny, destiny for God's kids and that we're supposed to be stepping into that. And so what I saw first before destiny could really start manifesting was that there was a long trough and there were people on either side of it in this vision and everyone was washing their hands. They were coming to a place of purification. And then I saw a massive wave rise up. And on top of that wave was a hand, a man's hand. And within that hand was a scroll. And instead of having words on the scroll as it unraveled, it was ships and they had sails. So uh, that's kind of Denise. I just thought that might make sense to you because you had a vision we we're going from rails to sails. So they were sails and the sails were there, the Lord said, in order 
for them to be driven, each one of us on our destinies and our missions to be driven by the Holy Spirit, that hearing the voice of God, like everything is from the Spirit. We're just relying on that in order for our man, our destinies to manifest. Um, and in regards to, um, there's a couple other things that he showed me on Sunday, which I think are really important for the body of Christ. And he showed me a magnet that was in the shape of a horseshoe. And Chris was sitting next to me and I was like, I kept seeing the magnet form a circle over and over. And I was like, what? That's like impossible. Like the two ends of the magnet can't come together. So I'm like, Chris, science question. It, I'm trying to figure out what God is showing me here. And he's like, yeah, no, that's impossible. And the moment Chris had said that, I, I went back and I started listening to the Lord and he was saying, yeah, you guys need to expect the impossible. So we always rely, for some reason, we seem to go to the natural law, like, oh, this can't possibly happen because that doesn't happen here on earth. But you know what? Heaven is come to earth through us. And so we need to be expecting the supernatural. That's got to be our first, mm. not our second. And then he said that this, it was a dual, a dual meaning behind what he showed me with the magnet coming together as a circle. And it represented unity that must come in the body of Christ. He said, as this army of gods is rising up, you cannot have division in the ranks. It makes it so much harder to complete the mission. Anyone who Anyone who has had a, uh, you know, been involved, sorry, that distracted me. I was like, what? <laughs> but anybody who's been in charge in the army or Navy or whatever, and they're on missions, if you have division in your ranks, it's very, very hard to succeed. So God wants to make that very clear. And as far as boldness, the other thing he showed me um, a little bit later during that service was um, this really mussy, I'm sorry, muddy, messy road, which again, Denise, this is, you're talking about it being messy. And this road was impassable. There was so much mud, nobody could go through it. And the next scene I see is this massive monster truck with huge wheels. And it just goes plowing through this messy road. And the Lord, is, she spoke to me and said that that, that messiness is going to be there, that it's going to be dirty. It's going to be messy. It's going to look impossible but I have given you the equipment to go through that. I've given you the equipment that you need to go forward. So not only should you have the boldness knowing who you are in Christ and what you, what you carry with him in you, Ephesians 6, we know we have the armor. We know he has, we have his word, the promises. So you've got boldness. So it's time to step into destiny and it's time to go forward with boldness in unity and again, he talked about the purification in the very beginning. That was the first thing, purification. So um, yeah, the stuff that's happening in the world, I see it, I, it's there, but it cannot be a distraction, which is, is what was spoken tonight. You cannot let those things be a distraction. You know who you are in Christ, release his kingdom, be the light wherever you go and, and stand for what is truth, which is what Danny, you've been doing such an amazing job of, and, and you're one that you're kind of breaking ground there. It's awesome to see. Um, I'm going to ask Greg to go. Thank you, Ivy. I want, I, but I want to, um, I actually want to read a couple things to you as we continue on a little bit. Um, those of you who have your Bible near you, the Lord's been really speaking a lot to me through the uh, through the Sermon on the Mount, through the Beatitudes, because um, it's what Jesus did, and um, and one of the things that we are called to do in this hour um, is not simply uh, how can I put it? We can use lots of terminology. We can say God has us going this direction. We have, uh, we have purpose. We have destiny. We have, um, you know, we need to reach people. Um, but what does it look like? I love, you know, when Heidi said love looks like something. Um, and and bringing, bringing everything into the place where we're living in our world right now, um, it looks like something. Um, you know, I appreciated what Alan was sharing earlier um, and I love that story, the, the water story, the holy water story. It's a great story. Um, and I hope they have a holy water revival at his, you know, where, where, where he's been planted. Um, 
and actually, uh, I'm, I'm I'm not just saying that facetiously. I mean, I, I don't think Lori. I don't know if Lori's uh, Lori Replogle's on on here, but but that that woman has such an incredible anointing in the public school setting uh, in Florida. I mean, she sees people saved and filled with the Spirit and the Holy Spirit coming and falling on people, people being delivered all the time. It's crazy. Um, the reality is, is that God wants that flowing through us. But when you look at Matthew um, 5, and I'm going to read a few verses just to kind of bring us to where we are, because this Jesus was talking about living in this kind. This is Jesus. This is Jesus speaking under a Roman domination. Uh, let me make this clear statement to you. In Romans, in Romans, it speaks that we should submit ourselves to governing authorities. Now, some of you have never heard this before, but I want you to hear it right now. Um, we don't have a king. Amen. Not in the United States. There is no king. We don't have an emperor. Actually, the governing authorities in our nation are us. That it's we the people. We have representatives of us, but in fact, we are the governing authorities in our nation. It's important that you understand that because otherwise you just fall back into the, well, no, this is our king. This is our, no, no. And that's why we have a voice. We are, we're supposed to vote. We're supposed to do those things. Those are good citizen things. It's not just like, well, whatever will be, will be. It's not. And many Christians have acquiesced to that mentality that we just simply acquiesce to what, well, this is the environment. You know, we just got to do this. But you, you read Jesus in Matthew 5. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn. They'll be comforted. He's, talk, he's talking to, to, to our generation right now. Blessed are the meek, the humble, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the, and this is one of my favorite verses, verse eight, blessed are the pure in heart, for they'll see God. Let me explain to you what I mean by that, or what I think he means by that. You have to remove your grid of who God is in order to see him. What, you're, what, you, what you look through, your lens, you had a bad dad, you had this experience, you know, everybody around you has gone through difficulty that's been close to God, whatever, whatever those things are in front of you, God was mean, or God was Santa, or whatever it was, that is your grid. Blessed are the pure in heart. What was pure means all the impurities are removed. They will see God. You got to get that stuff out of the way. You will not know who God is unless you get that out of the way. You, you will know that that God God is a merciful, but He's holy. You will understand that to fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You will understand that fear is not an issue when it comes to God and and honor and and majesty. Um, you will know as I have known in His presence when He's revealed Himself, and I've just fallen and wept and known. Oh my God, I'm in the presence of God Almighty. What am I doing even alive in His presence? He's amazing. And it's not me feeling like a worm. It's just me recognizing who he is. It, it's, it's, it's that exaggeration that Jesus would say, unless you hate your family, you can't be my follower. You know, you have to love him to such a degree that, the, that there is a radical, radical shift in, in, in the difference between your family and who God is, that you love him that much, that there's a desperation. But this is the verse that I think is for right now. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they'll be called the children of God. I'm going to read a little bit further in just a second. A peacemaker by necessity has to stand in a place that is the most violent, that is the most conflicted, the most horrific. You know, when, when Denise was sharing that, that picture when Jesus came, he called us as believers. He didn't just call us into a nice, placid place. He called us to war. We are called to war against all the demonic forces of hell. 
And sometimes all we want to do is cast a demon out of somebody and say, that was the war. Or we just want to heal somebody and say, that's the war. But there's another war. There's a further war. There's the hundreds and hundreds of corpses that were being sent to the United States that were stuck on that boat in the Suez Canal. They died being sent to a slave trade. That's war. There is the reality that there are, there are things that when we do not consider the plight of the broken and the needy and the hurting and the less fortunate and those who have gone through all kinds of things, when we do not understand that, we do not understand the heart of God because he is rich in mercy, because he wants all men to come to him, because he has a plan for all of them. And when we simply lay back and say in our American culture, well, it's okay, we're just going to stay safe. I promise you, there's no safety for peacemakers. They have to step into the midst of war. And that's why we have those in history who in the midst of slavery in England would stand and say, no, you cannot use children in this way. And the reality of what is happening in not just in this nation, but around the world, the, 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 criminal, the criminal activity of literally ch- killing children literally killing other lives, literally bringing um, vices to destroy people economically and every other way, those are demonic at the best. We know Jesus is coming back. We know he's our hope. But if we do not, if we do not take issue with what God takes issue with, we've missed the point of the whole gospel. The gospel is good news to the poor. And in order for it to be good news to the poor, the poor do not remain poor. They have provision met. They, there are things that God has intended for us as his people. And so this verse is an extremely violent verse. Blessed are the peacemakers. But then it gives, it gives exactly what we've been talking about, the prodigal coming home. I want to come home to Jesus. The reality is, is we are not children of God unless we are peacemakers. He said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. And we are called to be children of God. And it goes on, it talks about, blessed are you who are persecuted because of righteousness, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, when they persecute you, falsely say all kinds of evil against you. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And he goes on, talks about us being the salt and the light. And and he talks about that that being a Christian is not simply maintaining your position. It's, it's it's, It's not just simply living in this environment and saying, well, how can we make it through? It's actually, we change the world around us. We become the force that's to be reckoned with. We will be the ones who will beard the kings. And I've used that term before with some of you, you've heard it, but it was what Elijah did with, uh, with Ahab. Elijah walked into King Ahab and he bearded the king. He basically grabbed his beard and pulled on it and said, you are not, not for the Lord and God's after you. And the reality is there are demonic spirits that are so inflamed into a cultural thing where it's become accepted by believers. And I have been sickened, sickened by some of the stuff who my brothers and sisters, I love them, but where they have just reached this placidness. And it's like, well, we just want to be loving to everybody. We don't want, we don't want to offend anybody. Jesus offended the Pharisees. Jesus offended hell. When, when demons resp- came to him and said, have you come here to cast us out? The response was always, yep, and this is your hour right now. There was nothing about Jesus that was simply just simply this nice little guy. He was a warrior when he came because he knew he would become the very cost. He would go to the cross and die. He would, he would take the absolute power of God all the way to the end where it would cost his life. That's who we are as believers. This isn't about Mo. This is about following Jesus. 
This is about if the cross, if the cross is not yours and you don't understand that the world we're living in will just die and go to hell in a handbasket and I'll make it through somehow, you've missed the point. Because the point is we're called into this place. And a piece of that is called to be warriors. A piece is called to bring peace into places there is no peace. That's who we are. That's the prophetic nature of what God is putting on his people, I believe, in this hour. Greg, go ahead. Uh, Papa. (laughs) (laughs) We're not in a popularity contest, I'll tell you that. No, we're not, are we? You know, Paul Paul said that he he bore the marks of Christ. Come on. He was whipped and he was beaten, and I don't think that was from agreeing with everybody. Stephen was stoned to death. Um, things could get a lot worse. Absolutely. Things could, things could get a lot better. We hope but so. The same, but the same principles apply. Uh, I'm not somebody to know when the Lord's coming or even what to do next. I never know what to do next. And I think that falls into what Wayne said. Uh, blind people, being blind, blind of your own opinion that you're waiting to hear from the Lord, that you don't know what's next. You're waiting for the orders so you respond appropriately. So for me, the way that I can prepare for that, I think I've applied this in all areas of my life. Um, Drums, martial arts, when I used to study, not that I condone that, but Um, These principles are godly principles that apply to every area of life. And it's the basic foundational principles. It's the it's the basic rudiments of of Christianity, of any hobby or any art that you want to master. When we go back to those basics and we just continue to hammer the basics, I believe it makes you successful and it makes you ready for whatever comes next in the, in the aspect of playing music, I can't practice every song, but I can practice the rudiments. So I'm prepared for any song, any style of music, anywhere, anytime. And so Acts 2.42 says they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine, in fellowship and the breaking of bread and in prayer. And so those four things are the, the basic principles that if you continue to do that, and someone was saying about uh, faithfulness, they continued steadfastly. Whatever we're doing, it's got to be, I think um, Alan was sharing it with his ministry out in, in California. It's the faithfulness. It's the continued repetition over and over and over and over of these four things and then of, of applying it in repetition and being consistent in your life, that's what's going to produce the result because you can practice guitar for five hours and never play guitar. But if you practice 10 minutes a day, you probably be a good guitarist eventually. And so this is the same for all these things, Um, being faithful and consistent in the word, in the word of God, so that you know the whole word, not just a Facebook post, not and see, this goes into uh, somebody said, not your grid, getting off of your grid, uh, <laughs> sales, not rails. It's not the rail. It's not the letter of the law. It's the spirit of the law. And until you know the whole law, the whole word, on. you can't accurately apply it. And, and mm-hmm. so it, 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 you're basically applying your principles in your you, what's the word I'm looking for your grid over scripture, over your decisions. I think one of the, I'm like Ivy. I didn't get the, get the questions either. How do you make decisions? You have to make those decisions based off of God's word, his rhema word, his spoken word to you right now, which comes, which goes into the next, it, it, the breaking of bread in community. It, it's two things. One is breaking bread. We need community. We need, desperately need each other to make decisions, to make sure that our decisions are lining up with the word of God. And then they're double checked by our spiritual community, not the world, not the media, 
but by our spiritual community, they're double checked. If you're not consistent in your spiritual community, you don't have a community that knows you. So everybody's running around meetings, meetings, meetings. But if you don't have a community of five friends that know everything that's going on in your life, you really don't have community. You might know a lot of people, but you don't have community. And so that breaking your bread, when you sit down and eat together, it's different from going to a meeting. Like somebody's going to burp at the table and you're going to see table manners and you're going to see the good and the bad of each other. And in learning to walk with each other through that, that's community. And, and sometimes people want the blessings of the community, but they wanna reject the culture of the community. And so that culture needs to be established and it's not a Danny's culture, a mountain of worship's culture, it's God's culture. And, and when that culture is established in a community, that brings unity. And that brings community, that brings actually the miraculous that we're waiting for um, when we're praying, which is the last thing, being in prayer, we're listening, we're talking to God, and we're listening for an answer. Um, not the first option. Not the first option when you got to get a vaccination and you go, okay, that's what I'm going to grab. What's God's option? Um, it, it says that there is no temptation, but that which is common to man. And with every temptation, God will provide a way of escape. And what is that way? When you read the Bible, it's usually miraculous. And so, but you usually have to wait till the army's behind you and the Red Sea's in front of you and all your other options are gone. And then God's going to give you his option, which is going to be a way of escape. But we have to be patient in doing that. And as you're in your community, they can help you wait and be patient and you can have the confirmation you're making the right decisions. You can check yourself with your community, with the word of God and with your prayer, with all these things. But these are just the basic, the basic, basic things um, that we need to apply. And I think really discernment is huge, huge, huge right now because um, we waste, like time is our greatest value. Whether Jesus comes back tomorrow or a hundred years, time is our, it's the greatest commodity we have. And what are we doing with our time? Someone was saying about being complacent, getting distracted. Again, it's the faithfulness, it's consistency in our ministry, in our community together, in our reading of the word and making God a priority. In all those ways, that's what's gonna bring uh, the, the fruit of God in our lives, and it's going to get us through whatever's coming, whether it's good or bad. And I, I think that's kind of just what I had on my heart. Um, we got to go, you know, but it goes down to the basics. Go. What did God say? Go and make disciples. That's the, the mission. And if you do that and those four other things, I think you won't go wrong. I've gone... I've been involved with the Billy Graham stadium events, the Harvest Crusade, the Jesus Culture Tours, heavily, heavily involved in all those things. I'll tell you where I see the most fruit is when I go out and I minister to somebody and I find mm -hmm. one disciple and I, I make that person a priority in my life. Mm -hmm. One person. I've done stadium events. And, I, and, and when I go and do the events and I counsel, they're all backslidden believers that weren't doing these four things. So if you disciple somebody and then you, 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 you get discipled and then you make a disciple and then you force that person to go find somebody to disciple, that forces them to go evangelize. And then they have to disciple somebody less than them. So if they were just saved a week, they got to get somebody saved. And, and that's what continues the process. And if you're discipling somebody lesser than you and somebody is discipling you, thank you, Papa Danny, that you're going to be in a good place. And, and it just keeps building and building. That's God's plan. I don't think it's ever changed. So what's new? Nothing. <laughs> that's make so disciples. good. Acts 2.42, continue steadfastly in, in the word of God and in fellowship and in prayer. And, and these things will, you know, <laughs> your salvation will be secure. That's my plan. Thank you, Danny. Yeah, I want to just make one comment on what you said, Greg, because it's 
very important that people hear this, particularly since COVID broke. Many people have been, quote unquote, receiving their spiritual growth, spiritual, quote unquote, fellowship um, through through media um, uh, because they felt that's all they had that they, they needed to. And as a result, many have gotten used to not being with other people. Um, one of the things that I just want to tell you, if the person and the people that you're just watching on media, if that is quote unquote, your go-to, um, what I would encourage you to, to do is contact that contact whatever those people are, that ministry, see what kind of input actually they will put into your life. Uh, because if there's no reciprocity, if there's no, no sense of them investing in your life, they're not community. The reality is, is that we in community, if we have community, we love each other, we care about each other, we'll call each other, we'll talk to each other, we'll text each other, whatever. We have some form. And, and it's, it's more or less, but it's, but hopefully everybody is involved in that kind of a community. I can look at a lot of you and I go, I know I talked to them, you know, this much in a month period, some of you, I don't know. Um, but the reality is, is that I'm hoping that you're connecting with people that, um, that we're connected with. So we're connected. Um, but the reality is, is you need that fellowship. Why? Because otherwise you're just an island. And you're getting information, but there's no, no sense of that breaking bread together. I like that, Greg. That was really, that's very important. And in this hour, it's very important that it really goes back to what the Lord spoke to us about last June, June of two, uh, 2020, where he said, I want you to teach the church underground. I want you to teach them how to be dependent on me. But the dependence was not that we would be alone, but the dependence would know where to go, with whom to go, how to go. Uh, how, do you really hear them? You know, Ivy kind of brought this up and it's something we, we have said in, in our, our gatherings for years. What are you hearing? What are you seeing? You need to know both those things are both very important. So um, that was good. Brian, if I, what, if, yeah, go can ahead. I just add one, one yeah. thing just to honor the Lord, you know, the breaking of bread is the, the fellowship and community, but it's, it's also, you know, the Lord was broken on the cross. And so to remember that, to, you know, really to remember that and to spend your time worshiping and coming back because that's what we're going to do. Whether things get worse, things get better, or we go home to be with the Lord, we're going to continue to remember the cross and to worship the Lord. And, and really, that's like one of the main, I, I, I omitted that, you know, but that's the, that is really hey. one of the main focuses that we have to uh, be attentive to and faithful to. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, Brian, what, what are you hearing there, man? Um, now, in reference to what you shared earlier, uh, the Lord was speaking to me through Isaiah 60, where he said that, arise and shine. <laughs> and he said, your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And then he said, the darkness, he said, behold, darkness shall cover the earth. Gross darkness, deep darkness. He said, but the Lord will rise upon you. His glory will be seen upon you. And um, what the Lord was ministering to me was that we as, as Christians, we are the light of the world. Jesus made that reference, uh, making these powerful statements. You know, the same way he refreshed himself, addressed himself. In John chapter 9, verse 5, he said, as long as I am in this world, I am the light of the world. Because the, the disciples were ask, asked him a question and they said, uh, there was a man who was born blind. And they wanted to figure out why is it that this man was born blind? You know, is it because his parents sinned or, you know, What's the cause? And his answer to them was, uh, he was born blind so that the work of God be revealed, the glory of the Lord be revealed. 
And then he went further to say that I, as long as I'm in this world, I'm the light of the world. And the next verse, he goes up and it instructs the blind man to go and wash in the pool, you know, after spitting um, and uh, making a spittle and smearing that in his eyes and instructed him to go and wash in the pool. And he came back see. And then he's telling us the same thing that he said about himself. He said, I am, we are the light of the world. He says, in verse 16, he says, let your light so shine yeah. that they may see your good works and glorify your heavenly father. So what Jesus is saying to us that irrespective of the darkness, we are to shine brighter. Because we are the manifestation of his glory. We carry his glory. We carry the nature of God. When we are born again, we receive the life and the nature of Christ. You see? So we are born of God. And the Bible says that whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. When we are face challenges or difficulties, like what's been happening around us and, and the uh, vaccine mandates, you know, in such situations, that's where your faith is tested. If you've been walking with the Lord, if you know the Lord, when difficulties arise or circumstances tend to, uh, you know, uh, rise before you, uh, what's your response to that? You know, because Jesus said that in the book of John chapter 16, verse 33, he says, I have told you all these things that in me you may have peace. And he says, in this world you will have trials and tribulations and difficulties. But he said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In fact, the amplified translation, the classic edition, he says, I have stripped the world of its power to harm you. So we are the carriers of God's glory. We are the manifestation of his life. And God's desire, God's will is that we become the manifestation of that light. We bring light, like what Papa Tani said earlier, that we are the one to dispel darkness, to drive darkness out of whatever the Lord places us, you know, because um, the Bible says that we overcome evil with good, you know, and so if we are the light of the world, when you walk in a building or in an environment or in a community, you don't suggest to darkness, would you mind leaving? Because if you leave, we can have light. No, you bring in light and the entrance of light forces the exit of darkness, you know? And so uh, it, just to add on what uh, Brother Greg was saying, if you don't exercise your faith, put the word of God to work, you know, use the gifts and the skills and the grace that God has given you. You know, these communities and the mal groups that we've been having of, of, of us coming together and fellowshipping and breaking the bread, you see, God's desire, which is, you know, Papa Danny's heart is that we go out and demonstrate that which God has already and failed, you know, in our lives, manifested in our life, revealed to us through his work, and be able to put it to work and demonstrate the character of the spirit and, and, mm -hmm. and minister love, you know, impart that grace that was already deposited in our spirit. If we don't exercise our faith, when you face challenges, your faith will be weak. The Bible says that if you faint in the day of adversity, is because your strength is, is small. And um, your strength is small, you know. So the Bible talks about weak faith and little faith. Jesus mentioned in one place in the book of Matthew, I believe, chapter 8, where um, the disciples were in the boat and, um, and the winds began to blow. You know, there was a great tempest. The great tempest arose and, and the boat began to sink, you know, and they freaked out. And Jesus was in the boat sleeping, you know, and they cried out. They said, Master, save us, we are perishing. And when Jesus got up, 
he said to them, why are you fearful, ye of little faith? And the Bible says he rebuked the winds and the seas, and there was a great calm. And I've, I've realized that when, when your faith is little, it's as a result of lack of sufficient information. If you don't have enough of God's word, your faith will be small. You see, so, so for you to have more faith, you see, for you to grow your faith, you need more of God's word. You see that? Because faith is the ability, you know, is the response of the human spirit to God's word. So your faith grows as you feed on the word of God. But then your faith is strengthened when you put it to work. That's what uh, uh, the Bible says in the book of Romans, uh, to chapter 4, verse 20, that Abraham was not weak in faith, that he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. When your faith is weak, you stagger. You weaver, you see. So when difficulties come, when challenges come, or circumstances, you know, seem insurmountable, you can freak out and give in to what you're not supposed to give in. So we need to know what the will of God is for our lives and what God has said concerning us. Who are we? What are your rights and abilities in Christ Jesus? You see that? Because in this season, for us to be able to be bold, to say no to what is wrong, you see, to defy the status quo, we have to have, we have, to have an understanding of who we are yeah. and our rights and abilities in Christ. Yes, we come together as believers, you know, and fellowship together and love on each other and break the bread. But after all of that, the words we share with you, the love we share with you, you know, the glory in that community. When you go out, you put it to work. Mm. You see, you, you want to know what is God saying to you in that situation where you are. You know, if, if they fired you from the job because you refused to take the vaccine, what's next? Amen. You ask the Holy Spirit, Look, what should I do next? You see that? Because you know that he's going to talk to you personally. But when you don't know God's voice, you see that? Because you have taken these meetings like and you find yourself in a place where you have to make a decision, a personal decision, as a result of some of the challenges that you're facing, you find that you will not know which step to take because you don't know the voice of God for yourself. Amen. Amen. So I really encourage you to want to know what God has said concerning you individually and what he wants you to do in this situation at this particular time. Amen. Amen. And, and, and the Holy Spirit will guide you to be able to bring out what God wants you to bring out and manifest yeah. it through. Amen. That's good. Thank you, Brian. Chris, what do you got? So <clears throat> I was actually, before you sent the text, I was thinking about some of this stuff anyways. And every, everything everybody said, I like when, when God does that, when everybody says everything. So I, I, I'm, I'm pretty certain. God, God said three words to me. He said, fear, conformity, and ego are the three things that, that stop evangelism and stop people from doing what they're supposed to. And I said, well, Lord, you got to give me a scripture. So in Matthew 11, when, uh, when John sent his men to Jesus, this, I mean, you guys know this verse, but I'm, I'm the main part of there. But John sent his, uh, his people to Jesus to say, are you the one, you know? And then Jesus, it, it's the section where he says uh, the tribute to John. He said, as the men were going away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what did you go to see? A man dressed in soft cl clothing? Those who wear soft clothing are kings and palaces, but did, did you go to see a prophet? Yes, I tell you the one who is more than a prophet. This is about who is written, behold, I send a messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has not arisen anyone greater than John the Baptist, yet one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. For the, 
from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and violent men take it by force. For all the prophets of the law prophesied until John. And if you're willing to accept John himself as Elijah who has come, he has heirs, let him hear. And then it says right after that, but I sh- what, sh- what shall I compare this generation? Is it like a children sitting in the marketplace who call out to the other children and say, we played the flute for you and did, did not, and you did not dance. We sang the dirge and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, behold, a gluttonous man, a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors, and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by our deeds. And why I say that is, John fit, John, Jesus, all of us have to fit, fit that. I mean, if John had fear, he ain't going out in the wilderness, eating locusts, dressing the way he was. He, he certainly, there was no conformity to the standard, <laughs> you know. And, and he, he definitely didn't have any ego. And in fact, we know that later because his, his own people said, is Jesus the one? He said, go follow him. He wasn't trying to hold on to everything. And so much of what I see in the West that hinders everything is always those things. Either everybody is afraid to, to witness, or afraid to evangelize, afraid of what people will think, or they're conforming even to the evangelization standards of the world, you know. Like, like, like Greg said, you every, let's do a conference. Let's do this big thing and do all these things or the, the four spiritual laws or whatever it is. You can't, it's, it's gotta be, uh, it's gotta be Christ and all him and the spirit of God speaking to you And the ego part is a lot of times our knowledge is included. I mean, you got the ego, the people that think they're the greatest. And then you got the ego that think they it's, it's, if I memorize these steps, I'm going to do it. It's not because I'm going to tell you what, if God asked me to go out in the woods, I'm going to have some questions about that. But are you going to do it? Look at the Bible. It's never full of any anybody. I mean, all those things. You got to rise above fear, conformity, and ego. Because you're going to look like a fool. It's not going to be the thing the world says. And you better know what you believe about the one who sent you. Come because on. that's what it's all going to come down to. Like we said, the vaccine. God, I see. Danny said it over and over again. Who provides for you? When you got to go preach, when you walk into like a bad area in Brooklyn and you walk up where you're stepping over people with needles in their arms, are you trusting the Lord? What do you believe about him? Is he going to protect you? Is he going to provide for you? You know, when there's no food, is there going to be food? Whatever. Those things, fear, conformity, and ego. Nobody who ministered in the Bible had those. They got rid of them. And sometimes it had to be maybe the hard way, but they got rid of them. And, and that you got to know the spirit of the Lord and rise above those, or you won't be able to do it. That's really good, Chris. You know, the, the reality is, and, and I've said this a lot in the past few weeks, but none of us like this. None of us like the fact that mm, our faith, our, what we believe is actually being tested. It's very interesting, you know, in the Old Testament, it said they obeyed God, and, and then you read in Hebrews 11, they believe God, that actually, if you believe God, you obey God, and it doesn't matter what that looks like, you just are not, there is no compromise when, there comes, when it comes to God, and, and that we're in a situation right now where every single one of us, we were all sent to our rooms, <laughs> and every one of us uh, is going through testing. It's checking our hearts. It's checking, what do you really believe? What it, it, is this really worth it? And and we're seeing people that are walking away from the Lord. We're seeing that. But the truth of the matter is, is that testing, you know, we, we mustn't despise. James says, you cannot, you, you got to count it all joy when you endure various trials. Let me, let me change the, the word a little bit. Count it all joy when you go through a ludicrous, insane, tyrannical uh, pandemic, knowing that the testing of your faith will produce endurance. And let endurance have its perfect work. Perfect work. I'll never forget Toby after I went through covid it was the first thing when, when I was down south, Toby walked up and he says, the Lord told me, he says, you let COVID have its perfect work in you. And I knew that, I mean, COVID tested me to the max when I had COVID. 
it it ripped some things out of me that I it, it I Danny had to change. My my trust in the Lord had to completely shift during that time, and I am grateful that I went through COVID. Grateful. Because the testing of your faith will produce endurance and let endurance have a perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. That the testing that's coming is not to destroy you. It's to grow you. I want to share one verse because, you know, we talked about evangelism. We never really got into the the thing, but I, I, I know that there's some other things that we're going to move on to. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it's um, it's... It's such a powerful passage where, where Paul says, when I came to you, I didn't come with eloquence or human wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. Tonight, honestly, the, the, the best parts of what's happening tonight are these incredible testimonies that I'm hearing. And I'm like, Lord, that's what we want to hear more than anything else. And, you know, it, it might have sounded like I was saying, get angry. Uh, well, we know that the anger or the wrath of men does not achieve the righteousness of God. We know that scripture teaches us that. So it's not a human anger. It is a righteous anger. It's seeing what God sees. But yet there is this aspect that Chris just brought up. With the violent ones take it by force. We, we have to take the world by storm, with the contagion of the presence of God, with the contagion of joy, with the contagion of love, a love that's true, not wishy-washy, not, not just flash in the pan, but we have to, we actually have to carry this. That is, that is the militancy of this. The militancy is, is, not, is not being angry at everybody. It's not being angry, even, even at, at people who are providing the way for, for demonic things. But we're angry at what is occurring in people's lives. And because of that, we bring in the righteousness and the justice of God. The demonstration, and that's what he says. He says, I didn't come to you with eloquence or human wisdom, as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except Jesus Christ and him crucified. It's very interesting that he uses that part. Not just the life that he walked. Not just the healing stuff, but I brought to you Jesus Christ crucified. I brought the most violent thing. I brought him. I, I had to share with you because it is only the violence of the cross that brought us into peace. That's it. That was, that's all. It was his, his absolute sacrifice. And then he says, I came to you in weakness with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. There's a lot of people who have human wisdom. They're going by logic. You're, you're thinking everything through. You, 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 want, you, you, you want logical answers. You, and, and so you're checking everywhere. You, you know the media. You know which sites to go to. You, you've read all the reports. You, you're like, this is the wisdom thing. And the Lord says, I want your faith to rest on God. What, what Chris alluded to, I, I, I've said, listen, there are people who don't know how to trust God for provision. And this is the, I've said this for years. This is the basic foundation of your faith. The basic. If you do not know how to trust God for provision, give it up on everything else. He's your dad. God will provide for you. God will step in. But you have to trust him. And God never comes through at 1159. I have, it has been so rare he's ever come at 11. He always comes in, you know, like four in the morning, three days late when the body stinks. <laughs> when he's saying, do you really trust me? Yeah, 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 I do. I do. I do. He says, can you trust me now? Anybody who watched us in the scenario with what happened to our house in moving here, how ludicrous it looked. God, we're, yeah, we know where. We had no clue. 
We were late. We were actually two wake, two weeks late. But God provides. And we're not satisfied. I'm not, I'm not willing to move anywhere unless God speaks. I'm not willing to, to, you know, that's what Jesus said. I'm not willing to do anything unless my father says it. I'm not going to say anything unless my father speaks it. And I am not going to just simply um, just line up with the complying of, of what they're telling me to do because that's the right thing to do. I trust God. I trust God in this hour and I trust him for all of you. That was the vision the Lord showed me where he, he showed me a line of people coming up to my door. And when they op- when I opened the front door, there were, there was supplies for either direction it, uh, in our house from floor to ceiling. And the Lord says, I will provide for my people in this hour. Tell them that. And I want, I want you to know God's going to provide for you. And some of you, it's not coming for your job. You, the only reason you, you think you provide for yourself, you don't. You don't. Your provision comes from God. Thessalonians tells you that the reason you work is for others. That's what it says. I want him who's stealing to steal no longer, but rather let him work with his own hands that he may give to those who are in need. God's your provider. He never, he never gave you that term. He never called you Jira. He's Jira. And in the coming days, as we're going through stuff, I just want you to know God is for you. God is going to make it. He, he's he's going to be there for you. He's going to provide for you. And it it's a huge challenge for a lot of folks right now. But I want to I want to encourage you to make the jump and say, I trust him. I'm just trusting him in this hour. This is the hour to trust God. This is the hour to trust God. Do you want to say something, Chris? Yeah, just like you were saying about evangelism, but that's what it is, right? It's really learning to listen to him. I mean, all any any evangelism I've ever done in my own strength or my own ideas has not, the, even the people that said the prayer and came, it didn't last. But every time it was me, this God telling me something, even sometimes when it seems really foolish, those are the people that are still in the faith. They're the, they're the ones out ministering now. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it, I mean, and, it, and so as times get tougher and harder, we have to get further away from the idea, our own ideas and our own strength and more to him and relying on him. That's why, like, I mean, I think everybody said that, you know, it's, it's yeah. being in his presence. I, I don't know how, I don't know how else to do it. And how, how, I don't know how you're going to stand in times that are coming. Yeah. As as we've been here tonight, I've seen a couple things. Just I want to just quickly share one thing. I don't know if any of you, the rest of you, have seen some things as we're here together. Um, but I I saw I saw the doves being released. I said, Lord, what is it? And he said, He said, these are my people who are going to be led by the Spirit. And he said, they're being released everywhere. And he said, so it it we're we're about to witness. Um, not just a season of Christians, but a season of people who are led by the Holy Spirit. They're moved. They're moving by the by the power of the Holy Spirit in this hour. Um, I was listening to several of the things that was that were spoken by by you guys, and one of the things that is very important, and that we're, I'm going to pray that the eyes of your heart, that your your literally your um, uh, your senses are so attuned to hearing the little nuances when somebody says they're going through something that you don't miss the nuance that, that you, you, you catch every single nuance there is of what, of what the spirit of God uh, wants to do in people's lives um, that you, 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 you say, Oh, well, let me pray for you for that right now um, that we don't miss a single one that um because I believe that's where that's where this harvest is coming. The harvest is coming in, but it's going to come through those who are hearing by the Spirit. And so we've got to hear by the Spirit. We have to absolutely submit ourselves to His presence. That's the whole thing. I'm going to raise you up to function like the underground did. And that they, they do, that you are responding to the Holy Spirit. He says, go here. Turn here, knock on that door, go talk to that person across the street, go here, begin releasing by the spirit, everything he tells you, not just wrote, not just 
everybody. But listen, listen, yeah. listen. Many years ago, I was in Philadelphia in college, and, and it was there that the Lord began moving on me, particularly with evangelism. And um, I was going through college, and, and I, honestly, I wasn't doing very well. I was on the dean's prayer list. Um, and uh, cause I was in the bottom part of the class, I was flunking out and, uh, and the Lord said, I want an hour a day. <laughs> and I, I said, ah, I, I said, Lord, I need that time for study. That's what I need it for. And he said, you give me that one hour. I'll take care of that. And so I remember I was, uh, I went to school in Philadelphia and uh, right downtown. And, and so every day I would go out into the, to the concourse, which is like a railroad station. And I, I would walk up to people and um, evidently I didn't walk up to everybody because one time I had somebody come up to me and they said, you didn't talk to me. And, and I said, oh, well, I'll talk to you. And they said, no, I just wanted to tell you, I don't want to hear what you got to say. And I was like, well, and the Lord was already showing me that he was leading me already to people that were open because I saw hundreds come to Jesus in that concourse in downtown Philadelphia in those days. You got to listen. You got to move by him. You got to move by his spirit. One of the, uh, on another occasion, I want to share this with you because these are important things, but I went to, um, um, I know we've had a few outreach things recently here. And, and um, I remember we were down in, in Columbia at, at the, um, it was the state capitol. And, and uh, you know, we used to go down there a lot on Sunday mornings because it's funny how many people you can find who don't know the Lord are, are out when, when church is happening down south. Um, I guess they were, they're avoiding the church folks, so they go out Sunday mornings. But we were at the state capitol, and I remember some people were with me, and they were saying, I want to see how you do this. How do you lead people to Jesus? And, and um, I remember I was just down there, and I began moving. I began going. And somebody came and said, hey, you didn't ask me to come with you. I said, no. I said, you're just going to have to catch up. I said, when, when I hear something, I go. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to just try and have you tell me, you know, and say, okay, everybody, this is what we do. It, it, when you move by the spirit, you move, 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 move. And I want to encourage every single one of you to begin moving in every regard. Just let the Holy Spirit lead you, whether you're shopping, whether you're at a gas station, doesn't really matter. The Holy Spirit will lead you and be led by him, be led by the spirit. That's what will determine who are the sons of God when you're led. Anybody else on my panel? And then we're going to begin opening some things up. Really? Okay. Well, I, will, I would like to um, just, just speak a word of encouragement. Yeah. Um, I just want, I feel like because um, these few days I've had uh, some 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 people who have had challenges at their jobs, you know, actually, you know, somebody came to us who said that they they had um, they were releasing him, you know, from his workplace because he refused to take the vaccine, you know, and I had to speak, <laughs> share words from the Bible of what Jesus said concerning us, and um, I want to really encourage you not to fear. You know, refuse to fear. Fear is negative faith. It's like you trust in the ability of the adversary. If you're afraid of what might happen to you, you're trusting in the ability of that thing instead of trusting in Jesus, trusting in God. You know, the Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a yeah. sound love. Yeah. And learn to always speak those words to yourself. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. You know, man, uh, you are bold. Be bold as a lion. You know, um, greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. You know, and, um, and and God, God is by your side. You know, the Bible says that we be imitate as of God as dear children. You know, we copy Him, we act like Him, we talk like Him. Ephesians chapter 5, because we are like him, you know, as he is, so are we in this world. And so the glory of God is, is on your life. The hand of God is on you, and no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Yeah. Go forth and do what God has called you to do. 
and the glory of God will be revealed in everything that you get in contact with. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Yeah, we're going to pray for everybody in just a second. I want to, I want to make sure we do that. Um, Ivy, is the Lord show you anything else while we've been gathering? No, anybody else? Okay, we're going to go ahead and open this up. Um, Chris, did you get any questions at all? I, I have not. I'm going to, do you want me to allow everybody to start their video? Everybody can start their video. Don't unmute yet. <laughs> they cannot unmute themselves. If you, gotta, if you need to be unmuted, you got to raise your hand. <clears throat> and um, but yeah, you can start your videos, everybody. And uh, hopefully have it on your face and not on the ceiling. That'd be really nice. <laughs> um, good. Good. It's good to see everybody. They come. Going to wait just a second. Man, some of you look really nice, like you dressed up for this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Danny, I think you said it, but like, I think sometimes people think a peacemaker is weak. Yeah. Uh, it, in, in, uh, I've, I've always said this, they, you know, uh, a, a person who's a peacemaker that's not capable of violence is harmless, not a peacemaker. Right. You, you know, and, I mean, Jesus obviously came to bring peace, but he could have called down army. He could have wiped everybody out in a second. And he, and he did what the Lord would have him to do. So a lot of times people, you know, take that as a, um, a weakness, but it's, it's not. Oh, it's a strength. Yes. No, it's a strength. So the first thing I want to do, we got some people who don't want to be seen. Uh, some um, people are having problems with their <laughs> video, they said. What's that? Some or some don't have video? Have video? I'm, okay. I'm taking care of it. You are? Okay. You're working on it. Working on it. And um, so mm, I will get to you if you, you have a video, just keep messaging me in there. I'm, I'm getting it. Good. We're pretty close. We're pretty close. Good. You have to respond actually to the question that you, you have been asked to turn your video on. That's what you have to do. Uh, it's not just going to start automatically. So, all right. Um, you know, the first thing I want to do is I just want to, I want to just pray for everybody uh, right now. And there's some who I know have already um, gotten off, but um, it's, to me, it, it's one of the things that, that I'm kind of excited about because I felt like, uh, particularly when I was down south, that the Lord says, hey, you have authority to do this, do it. And, um, and so we, um, we began. We began praying for people and um, just asking God to, to absolutely um, heal people. So the first thing I want to do is, um, and oh, that's kind of a weird thing, but okay, Lord, um, I don't like it when, when I hear something that, that just sounds weird, but, uh, but sometimes we do. So I want you just to put your hand somewhere on your computer or your phone, if you're not. Um, and actually, it's very interesting. This, this is something that, um, oh, what was his name? can't remember. One of the healers. Um, who's the one who had the big school in Tulsa? Um, Oral Roberts, Oral, Oral Roberts would do this and he called it a point of contact. And uh, so I want you to just put your hand somewhere on, on, um, on your computer somewhere. We're, we're going to ask God um, for complete in the coming days, healing all over, all over you um, that if you've um, had a vaccine um, or if you've been uh, fearful uh, in any regard, uh, we're just going to ask Holy Spirit right now just to break the power of that. Lord, right now, thank you that we get to call upon you, that your name, your name is healer, that who you are and what you do is more powerful than anything, Father, that any, any man can muster up, Lord, that all of hell could create something that is so vicious, 
so poisonous, so bad, so dark. All of hell could do that. But so what? You're God, and you're bigger. And the blood of Jesus is powerful enough to cleanse us from everything. So I'm asking God right now that you begin touching people, you heal people, that Lord, that if there's if there needs to be a release from their system of things, Father, that that have been um, messing with their bodies, I'm asking, and in their and in their immunity system or whatever it is, Lord, I just ask in Jesus' name, remove that and release healing. And Lord, I speak to fear. Fear on every regard, fear about the coming days, fear about uh, the, the conditions we're in right now, fear about what, what, is, what could be coming. I break the power of fear. I speak it into every home right now. Lord, I'm asking that it absolutely becomes completely contagious off of every person here, that fear everywhere they go will absolutely run and shriek and leave. That, Lord, demonic fear that has come on people would be shut down, that we would be able to set our feet on the head of this fear, that it will no longer, will no longer have dominion over us, but that the name of Jesus will have dominion over us, that you, Lord, you, Lord, would be the, the, the powerful, the powerful voice, the powerful word, the powerful uh, movement of power, Lord, through our lives, that you, Jesus, your name would be exalted through our lives, and no other gods, no God named fear, no God named pandemic, no God named COVID, no God named uh, a mandate, no gods, that your name, you would be exalted, that your name would be far more repeated through our lips than any of this other stuff any of it, any of it, that your name would be exalted, Jesus. We're your family, and we thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Somebody right now, you've got a stomach deal happening that's been going on in your belly, and it's, it's been going on for several months right now, but I just see the Lord just removing that right now. I can I can, I can feel that coming, coming right, right out right now, right now, right now, that this whole stomach issue, primarily on the right side, that's coming out right now. And, and Lord, right now, I just ask, Father, and the, the Lord, it's been like, for some, it's been like a monkey on their back. Father, that, that it's just been heavy, a heavy weight. I pull that weight off right now, and I release your peace. I release your joy. Release your peace, release your joy. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. She cut up us up a bucket. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. Any, any of the other, um, the other, the other guys I've had on the team right now, I just want you to just go ahead and pray right now. We're going to let others as well in just a second, but right now, go. More, Lord. More, Lord. Yes, 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 Lord. More, Lord. Yes, Lord. Shiva Baba Basataka Yerba Kura Basataka. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Precious Holy Spirit, we invite you to come. Yes. Lord. Invade every place, Lord. Invade every place. Yes, Lord. Every single person under the sound of our voice, we ask your spirit to flood their homes. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray for supernatural courage to rest upon your children, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let your grace rest upon them. Let your glory be revealed. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray that the eyes of their hearts the very center and core of their being will be flooded with light. 
Yes, Lord. That they may know and understand the hope to which you have called them. Sure. And how rich is your glorious inheritance in the saints. More, Lord. That they may know and understand what is the immeasurable, the unlimited, and the surpassing greatness of your power. In and for us who believe, as demonstrated in the working of your mighty strength, which you exerted in Christ when you raised him from the dead and seated him at your own right hand in the heavenly places. May your strength abide in our spirit. Mm. Mm. May your inner fortitude be granted to them in the name of the Lord Jesus. We rebuke the spirit of fear in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, and in it, every single person under the sound of our voice who has any kind of complication in their bodies, any kind of sickness or disease, we command it to die and pass out of their bodies. Yes, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we command the pain to go. I command the sickness to leave and the affliction to cease. Yes, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, be healed in your body. Be healed in your bones. Be cleansed in your blood right now. Receive your healing. I come against every sickness, every disease, and every infirmity in the body. In the name of the Lord Jesus. May the blessing of God's word rest upon you and in your home. Health is yours. Strength is yours. Yes, sir. Promotion is yours. Protection, increase. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And God will increase you from glory to glory. You move from grace to grace and from strength to strength, increasing in victorious power. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the call of God is on your life. The glory of God is upon you. Arise and shine. Mm. Your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Father, I pray for... Um, for ears to be open to hear you, Lord, and eyes to see where you're moving, Lord, that, that people would begin to have freedom to move in what you have, have for them, Lord God, that they would move with what, your direction, that they would stand in boldness, Lord, that, that, that uh, at these jobs, when, when, they're, when they're threatening them or letting them go, just that they would begin to, to, to proclaim your goodness and that that's fine, you, that you'll provide and that you're the answer and you're the way. The, the people where they've held back when you've asked them to do things because it looks foolish in the world will, 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 will stand and be bold because they know your voice. Mm -hmm. They know it's you, Lord, that they'll begin to declare your name and your goodness in, in places, Lord. The people that know where they're supposed to go and the, and the things they're supposed to minister, that they'll go, Lord, that they'll go. I'm asking for freedom to minister and move in your spirit in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes. More, Lord. More, Lord. Father, we come against spiritual apathy. Father, that courage would rise up in your people. Father, that your voice would, would, would draw them to step out in action. Yes, Lord. Father, that you would, you would bring a boldness of Joshua and Caleb on this generation, mm -hmm. that every single one of them, every person here is here because you have ordained for them to be here at this time, because they carry something of you that this generation needs, sure. that this world needs right now. So, Father, I ask that you would release that courage into them, mm. that they would know that you have called them for such a time as this. Yes, Lord. That, Father, that, that even when the enemy rises up, they would look to you and say, Father, what do you say about this? And then declare that into the atmosphere. Declare that into the situation. Declare that into the work environment. 
Yes, Lord. That there would be a freedom that would come up, uh, uh, on your people right now. That the, even in the midst of the storm, like, like Brian had shared, that even in the midst of the storm, they would look to Jesus and they would say, what do you say about this? Yes. Where can we come into agreement with you on that? Father, I ask for a, a militant spirit to, to rise up within people to say, the status quo is not okay with me. And the Lord has put me here for such a time as this. Mm. But I, I, I also speak to uh, weariness in the bones. Father, that you would give strength yes, to those who are tired. You strength that you would breathe into their lungs. Father, this coronavirus attacked the lungs because you, the spirit of breath, the, the ruach, were designed to be released at this time and the enemy has come against that father we come against that right now and we just say breathe holy spirit breathe holy spirit breathe holy spirit on this yeah. nation breathe yeah. on this uh, on, on 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 the whole of the north american continent on europe on africa on asia on australasia father would you release your spirit in such a mighty measure that men would come to see the glory of your name that they would say, who is this God? That we cannot comprehend what he is doing. But we sure, we sure encounter him. Yes. Lord. Father, and, and I ask that, that, people, that, that people's testimonies would rise up. That their testimonies would, that, that you cannot argue in this, in this, in this mm -hmm. day and time. Everyone is wanting to be heard, Father. And we have a testimony that needs to be heard. Yes. So, Father, I, I ask that even as this younger generation are looking out and wanting to be heard and wanting to know that they mean something, Father, I ask that you would give us the boldness to speak their, into their identity. We, give us the, the, the insight into what they need for their lives, that we may declare it. And, and Father, I, I come against right now any carpal tunnel that anyone is experiencing. We just come against you right now. In Jesus' name, we, we command the, the tendons to be loosed. We can't command all inflation to, uh, inflammation to be to be gone right now in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yeah, Ivy, you have something. Denise has something too. Okay. Denise. And then yeah. Yeah, go, go ahead, um, Denise, and then I'll have Ivy. Go ahead, you're on. Okay, Jesus, I just want to lift up those people that have been a spirit of anxiety, where their chest is tight, where they don't sleep well at night, where they can't seem to come into your presence, that they can't seem to focus, Lord. We just come against this spirit. We find it in Jesus name and we curse the root of it Lord and I also want to come against the mindset that that has come into some of their into some of them that says that because of my circumstances I don't have a choice but if this anxiety or I have a right to this anxiety or I have that we just want to I just want to break the ties with the enemy and the lies Right now, in Jesus' name, Lord, that they would be free from that, that they would be free to accept that you have for them, Lord, that yes, your Lord. peace would overcome them, that your peace would, would take away all the anxiety, all the feelings of, of tightness, stress, Lord, that they'd be able to sleep at night. Lord, we ask that the truth would set their minds free and set their hearts free. Yes. yes, Lord. Ivy, go ahead. Uh, so the Lord showed me a tree, and there was, and then He focused in on just a couple of acorns on it, and He He wants me to pray for an increase of fruit in the lives of everyone on tonight. Um, so, Father, I just thank you for the love that each one has for you, Lord God, and we ask for an increase in fruit, Lord, that would bring you glory, that, Father, you would be glorified by everyone's words and actions. And, Father, right now, I just pray that an intimacy, a level of intimacy with each one that is on right now, 
would grow, Father, that there would be time that they never thought they had where they would just be intimate with you, Father, so that, Lord God, sure. that you would know them, Father, that you would know kind each of. one. So, Father, I thank you for the, the the desire in the hearts of each one who's listening just to seek your face, to hear your voice, and to, to, to see visions and dreams that you could speak directly to them. And that they would know, Father, your will and that you, Father, would know them. So I, I just thank you for my brothers and sisters, Lord. And I, I thank you for the love that each one has for each other. Let it increase, Father, and let there be no brokenness in unity, Lord. And that one other thing that the Lord had showed me with that magnet coming together in unity, um, he had showed me that, that even the divisions within the body of Christ that we see through the multitudes of denominations that are out there, even yes, those Lord. through his miraculous supernatural power, he can bring unity in the body of Christ. So we're believing you for that, Father. Come on. Lord, just uh, allow those divisions to go now in the name of Jesus. And I just thank you, Father, for each one that is on tonight. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, I saw, I saw a couple pictures. One is uh, somebody had like a black cloud just surrounding their head. Um, and it was like, I think it was like a mental fog and, uh, and uh, just uh, hard to see through, hard, hard to see in the spirit. And so I just, um, if that's you, just receive this. I'm going to break it off. So Lord, whatever that is, whatever that black cloud is, that oppression, that mental fog, I break it now and I tell it to go and it can't come back in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. And then I saw a, a picture of just uh, dry earth that was kind of cracked. And you know how like uh, the water that has previously been saturated and, and it cracked. And, um, and then I saw uh, it begin to rain on it. So mm. if you're feeling dry and cracked right now, I just want to, uh, I'm going to pray for that rain. So Lord, I ask that the rain would break. Lord, I ask that just uh, that uh, whoever that is that's feeling dry and, and just uh, they've known your water in the past. And um, Lord, I just ask for a, just a, a fresh flooding, a fresh outpouring of rain right now. I just bless them in your name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I just want to pray for confidence because I think confidence brings boldness. Yeah. And, um, this is a verse that I, I was going to share earlier, 2 Timothy 3, 13. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of or been confident of, knowing from whom you have learned them. <laughs> you can be confident. And that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to, to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, which mm. brings confidence, <laughs> thoroughly equipped from every good word. So, Father, I, I pray for the confidence, Lord knowing that we've been called by you, Lord, we are your workmanship, Lord, that we would have the confidence, God, that even though in our uniqueness, Lord, in our failings, in our, in our brokenness, Lord, you know us better than anybody. Yeah. And God, you created us in your image and you called us, God. You have works that you prepared beforehand, Lord, before we had a hand, you had these things in mind for us, Lord, and you've called us to walk in them, Lord, and you've equipped us, God, that we would have the confidence that we wouldn't shrink back, Lord, that we wouldn't feel that we don't have what it takes, Lord, to reach people, to have the answer for the unbeliever, Lord, to have the power to heal, Lord. All these things come from you who called us, Lord, and has, and has equipped us fully, Lord. Would you give us the confidence, Lord, that would create the boldness, Lord, that would cast out fear, God, that would would, would motivate us, God, to, to go into all the world, Lord, that there would be nowhere we'd be afraid to go, Lord, because we know we're fully equipped, Lord, for every good work. You yeah. did it. You sent us, God, and you, you, you equipped us. So give us that confidence, Lord, 
that creates radical boldness, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that you're doing that tonight, Lord, in every heart, every home here. In Jesus' yes. name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And I also pray that the love of God, that the love of Christ will abound more and more in knowledge and in all discernment, that we may approve things that are excellent, and that we may be sincere without offense until the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ. I pray that we'll come to know him deeply, yes, have sir. a rich fellowship with him, that he enlighten us more in the things of God and reveal to us the reality of the kingdom. That you may come to know the love of Christ that surpasses mere knowledge without experience. That you may be filled with all the fullness of God throughout your entire being. That you may have a rich fellowship with him, a rich experience with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're going to just... go to uh, um, some groups if folks want to get specific prayer for various things. Um, we're going to be moving in that in that realm right now and i want to encourage you um uh, enjoy each other pray for each other be specific um is is there any anybody before we go to those breakout rooms if there's something very specific um yes danny that's way um, Brian, I keep hearing the phrase holy fire over you, and I'm, I'm not sure if this is a revelation here. that's going to be coming to you, but I yeah. feel like th I mean, that th it might be a, 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 a book, um, or, or something along those lines, just revelation regarding holy fire, I, and I just release that over you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I, had a, I had a word for G and one for Amber. Okay, um, go ahead. Judy, um, I saw a picture of you. Uh, it has to do with prayer, but I saw uh, a, a picture of you sharpening an axe. And I feel like the Lord is, is, is sharpening your, your, your effectiveness in prayer. He's stirring prayer in you. Um, so, Lord, I ask that you'd bless that in her. Um, Lord, more anointing in that area. Bill or Lord. Yes, Lord. And Amber, I saw um, a picture of a, 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 like a little seed in your hand. A little like, it was like a little mustard seed. And it's like you're before the Lord and you're going, this, this, is, this is all I have. And he, he said, I'll take it. And he reached in your hand, hand and he grabbed it. And um, I feel like the Lord wants to say, you have all you need. Come on. Um, you have all you need to pursue him. All you need to move in the things of the kingdom. All you need is a little bit. And he's going to take that. That's so good. And I think um, Debbie, uh, Debbie Paulson had a word as well. Go ahead, Debbie. Yes, I did. Um, I just kept hearing and seeing in my mind's eye that um, the Lord's arms just stretching around us and just giving us comfort. And I believe that, um, especially in this time, that there's going to be such a supernatural comfort that's going to come over us. Um, there's so many people that are struggling, so many, I'm talking about the Christians, the, you know, us, the remnant, you know, we're struggling and some of them don't know how to speak it out, don't know how to say it, but the yeah. Lord is saying to, um, um, don't worry because my comfort is here. My arms are here. I'm right here with you. And like I said, I just kept feeling those um, and seeing those huge arms of the Lord come wrapping around us. So good. Beth, go ahead. Um, so when Chris was talking about the fear, conformity, and ego, I saw um, like that circus act where there was the guy who threw knives at the, it was usually a guy throwing knives at the woman. Um, and I felt like 
I might say I don't have fear, but that was a whole nother level of like seeing the Lord being the one as the knife thrower and me being that person who's trusting him as the knives come close or whatever. And then I felt like it represented the that fear, but then nonconformity, because I mean, it's not a lot of people who do that or are equipped to do it. And then the ego is, it's all about the knife thrower. Yeah. It's not about the person who is getting the knives thrown at, um, which is all about the Lord. So I just, yeah. Amen. Doris, did you have something? Yes, I did. I felt like that a lot of people have, um, have wondered about if their faith was enough to carry. And I saw the Lord going with his, uh, with his sheaths that were to pluck from the, from the uh, fields. And in those sheaths, he's giving us that faith mm. to bring in the harvest, that there's nothing too difficult, that we are going to walk through our families, walk through our generations, walk through our friends, our, and, and we will be equipped because it's faith is a gift of God. We have a measure of faith, and now I believe God's increasing that measure of faith. Be blessed. Amen. Something from the Ortolanis, I think. I don't know whose hand that is. Go ahead. Yeah, I just, I just get a sense that um, everybody's tapped out, and... Uh, as far as joy. And um, I just want to pray. I want everybody's willing is uh, because with, with joy comes peace and with okay. peace comes rest and you can still, still be militant from a place of rest. You can work from a place of rest, but I'm getting me a nice big jug and everybody else who wants to. <laughs> I saw like a release. Of joy. Okay. So Come on. anybody, anybody wants what to did just, you see? Tell them. I just saw a release of joy. Oh, drinks. Just, uh, yeah. Drinks. And then, then uh, Alan grabbed his cup, his glass. So, <laughs> and just, everybody who wants to right now, I just pray right now, Lord, for a release. Bring it on, Lord. Yes, <laughs> yes Lord. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Please bring your joy. Right now to everyone here. Everyone under my voice. Lord, yes, Lord. Lord, yes, Lord. And, and rest, Lord, and peace, no matter what yes, they go into, Lord. Yes, Lord. Our source, our strength, our shield, our buckler. Come on. Man. Well, they come from every side, Lord. We're not going to lose our joy because we look yeah. to you. Amen. Amen. Oh, Amen. 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 Release that. So good. Thank you, Lord. It is amazing seeing all of you. That's a great, that's a great, you know, let's go into this thing with joy. Give each other joy. Uh, if the Lord's giving you any other words, um, I want you to encourage you to share them in the breakout groups. And if it's, if it's a real important word, please send it to us. Well, sorry, I'm way, way, way forward here. Um, send it to us and just uh, um, keep releasing those things. We, uh, the Lord is speaking. This is not an hour where the Lord is, is the, where he's not speaking. He's speaking a lot. And um, it's a really good hour to be alive. But I love you all very much. Look forward to seeing you, each of you very soon. We do have, for those of you who are in New England, uh, I mean, you can come from anywhere you want. If you want to come from California come on, or uh, Idaho, but um, we are meeting this Saturday night here. Oh, sure. Bless you guys. Love you. Love you. Uh, listen, I have, uh, I'm shifting quite a bit to Rumble. I want to encourage you to join me on Rumble. Um, Danny Stain uh, is the official channel, um, and if you can join me there, that would be helpful, only because I don't know how long um, some of these social networks are going to be holding up and 
letting me continue on. I'm going to be getting a little bit stronger, a little bit more vocal about some things in the days to come. And um, uh, not because I'm just trying to become more vocal, but because it's that time.